Good morning, my YouTube family. Plovdiv is the second largest city in Bulgaria, situated on the banks of the Marica River in the historical region of Trace. It's among the oldest cities in the world with a history that dates to the 6th century before Christ. The town has been home to quite a few civilizations over the centuries, and its rich history is reflected in its architecture and culture today. Hey guys, welcome back into my channel. As you can tell, I'm again in Plovdiv. I'm addicted to this city. But today I just want to take it easy. Of course, Plovdiv is all about history. You can see historical landmarks on every corner, but today I'm going to focus just on a few of them. And you can still watch my previous video if you want to know more. And in today's video, I just want to have a walk, have a nice lunch, cup of coffee, walk around the old city uh, without any stress. Of course, I want to see a few things which I didn't manage to see the previous time, but the video will be more relaxed. September and October are lovely in Bulgaria. The exhausting heat drifts away, the mornings and evenings become more cool, but the day temperatures still reach about 25 degrees Celsius. I'm going to begin my walk from the singing fountains at the Tsar Simeon's garden. The park was created in 1892 by the Swiss landscape architect Lucien Chevales. Situated in the heart of the city, the park is one of the emblematic places to visit. Summers in Plovdiv are excellent with plenty of sunshine and hot temperatures, but it may be a little bit too hot for some people. That's why I think that the fall season would probably be the best time to visit. Plovdiv is one of the few modern cities with a well-preserved Roman Forum. The Forum developed between the 1st and the 5th century AD. It was an administrative, commercial and religious center of the ancient city. Plovdiv even had libraries, something that was very uncommon during that time. On the left you can see the Odeon of Philippopolis. This remarkable building is the Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. Ludovic. In case you want to see it, it's right next to the Great Basilica. Now I'm walking towards the main pedestrian area. The main street is called Knyaz Alexander I. Just across you can see the municipality. It's located on the Stefan Stambulov Square, which is also known as the Square of Kopchetata or the Square of the Buttons. This area is called Kopchitata or the Buttons uh, just because of these seats where you can sit around the fountain. This is probably one of the busiest spots in the city. 
In the past, there used to be a Roman bath and on the spot of the fountain, there used to be a mosque. Because of its hills, Plovdiv is especially picturesque during the fall season. Each hill offers stunning views overlooking the other hills and parts of the city, and the autumn colors are just amazing. I am on my way to the clock tower situated on top of the Danov hill, also known as Sahat Tepe. Sad in Turkish means time. The clock tower dates to 1623, but it was reconstructed a couple of times. It's nearly 18 meters high and it still works. The view from the top of the hill is nothing less than spectacular. Just across you can see the Bonarjik hill with the monument of Alosha. The hill with the clock tower is very close to the main pedestrian area and it takes just a short 10 minute walk uphill. It's still early in the morning and I'm craving a cup of coffee. I'm sitting at the Turkish uh, coffee shop behind the Jumaya Mosque and I'm having a coffee. In a moment I'm going to try one Turkish dessert. I've never tried it before. Kunefe is a crispy dessert prepared with kadaif and cheese. This is a traditional shredded wheat dessert with pistachio filling. It's served hot out of the oven so that the cheese is soft and stringy and it also goes well with ice cream. What I love about it is that the cheese balances the sweetness. This is going to be my favorite Turkish dessert. The Jumaya Mosque was built in 1363 till 1364 on a spot where previously there was a church. In the 15th century, the building of the mosque was destroyed and replaced by the current temple. It's quite bizarre, but the Turkish pastry and coffee shop where I've just been is also housed by the building of the mosque. An interesting characteristic of the Jumaya Mosque is that it has nine domes and this is not typical for the mosques. The interior of the mosque is lavish with lots of plant ornaments and frescoes dating to the 18th century. Right in front of the mosque we have the Roman Stadium, which is one of the largest and best preserved landmarks from the time of the Roman Empire and particularly the 2nd century AD. The stadium was so large that it could fit 30,000 people. Its northern end is exposed while the rest is located under the main street. If you visit Plovdiv, go and check this out. In the basement of the H&M store, there is a small museum where you can see the ruins from the stadium. It's kind of cool because then you can do your shopping and sightseeing at the same time. The architectural and historical reserve of the old town of Plovdiv has a lot of 19th century houses and some of them are museums open to the public. One of the most beautiful buildings over here is the Kumejev's house, 
that currently houses the regional ethnographic museum. I wanted to have lunch at this restaurant because there is an outdoor terrace which offers some great views to the city and on top of that you can enjoy the company of these fluffy cats. I have ordered a patatnik, a traditional Bulgarian dish that has originated in the Rodopi mountains. It's made of grated potatoes onions and spare mint and it's usually cooked over a fire or a stove. Cheers. I've never been to the Balabanov's house so let's go and visit. The building is a remarkable example of Bulgarian Renaissance architecture. The house was the property of a rich family and it's named after its last owner, Luka Balabanov. It was built in the 19th century but later on was demolished and rebuilt in the 1930s. I personally enjoyed the exterior much more than the interior. In this episode we have explored the historical center of Plovdiv, the clock tower, Jumaya Mosque, the ancient stadium, the old part of the city and I made some stops for coffee, sweet treats and lunch. If you have enjoyed that, stay tuned for the next video in which I will take you to the hipster district Kapana and we will continue exploring the graffiti walls, murals and modern parts of Plovdiv.